but it could be uh, coming soon. And if we are going to get a push up into these higher levels uh, between about 30 and I would say about 32 or 33K, Hello everyone, today our guest is popular YouTuber, crypto and Bitcoin investor and trader, Frankie Candles, who in this video analyzes Bitcoin, Ethereum charts, and describes his thesis of markets sideways movement. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin BTC has hit price highs not seen since mid-2022, with the largest crypto by market cap touching $30,000 and setting a new high for 2023. According to CoinGecko data, Bitcoin has slightly surpassed $30,000 and is at nearly $30,200 at the time of writing, a price it hadn't reached since June 10, 2022. In the last 30 days, BTC recorded gains of nearly 46%, rising to its highest level in 10 months on April 11. Michael Saylor, the founder and executive chairman of business intelligence firm MicroStrategy, has been an outspoken advocate for BTC and has been leading the charge for corporations to adopt cryptocurrency as a strategic asset. MicroStrategy has added billions worth of Bitcoin to its balance sheet, currently owning 140,000 BTC as of April 5 for a total purchase price of $4.17 billion. With an average price of roughly $29,803 per coin, the latest price jump means MicroStrategy has made a gain on its investment. Some analysts predicted that it would regain its $30,000 price tag as traders await the United States Consumer Price Index CPI, report on April 12, which will give insight into the Federal Reserve's battle against inflation. Uh, we are still just kind of trading in that same sideways range we've been in, um, so not the most exciting thing in the world, uh, but there are some things pointing to uh, some potential upside, and I, I do think, guys, we will get this break to 30K eventually. Uh, the only thing is, are we going to get that pullback first? And this has basically been the question for like two weeks as we've just been sitting in this sideways range. Super, super boring, but I kind of want to go back, um, you know, due to the fact that there's really no uh, new levels to look at or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, the TA briefly. And then I kind of want to just zoom out and compare this to the uh, 2019 little fake out bull market that we had because there are a lot of very eerie similarities. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in here really, really quickly. I'm going to go ahead and actually clear these indicators. Um, and then just bear with me because this is, uh, I did not realize this was signed into Ben's uh, trading view, but that's not a big deal at all. Um, so coming on over to the four hour time frame, guys, obviously, yeah, this is what we, this is what we drew on Friday. Uh, you know, still just wiggling in between this uh, little local range we have here between about, uh, what is this? This is uh, between about 28,550 and about uh, lows of this range at about 27,4. So again, you know, basically just continuing to treat this as a sideways range. We did come up and test the, the highs, and uh, we may be able to come back down to test the lows. However, if we go ahead and pull up some of our indicators here real quick, um, I do just want to show you guys uh, the higher time frames do still seem to be rolling uh, to the downside just a little bit here. Uh, you can see the VWAPs are starting to come down, not only on the weekly, uh, but we also have the five-day coming down. The three-day is uh, has your red dot confirmed. I believe the four-day also has, uh, let's see, let me go pull that up real real quick. Four day has the four, uh, red dot is also printing here as well. So this is kind of, uh, you know, we've been talking about this forever, right? Like just the, the higher time frames. Um, although the longer term does call for more upside the, in the medium term uh, with the VWAPs uh, coming down, it does look like we could just kind of cool off a little bit. Uh, so just being cautious of that. But really, guys, what I want to look at here uh, is if we zoom out just a bit, I'm gonna have to pull up the um, bitstamp chart. Uh, let's see, let's see, BTC. Come on, Bitstamp. Um, just for some more price history, Bitstamp right here. Okay, beautiful. So uh, just zooming out a little bit, guys, something I want to focus on here is that fake out 2019 uh, little fake out bull market that we had. And uh, kind of what's interesting here, as you guys know, right now we are hitting um, basically the lows of the bull market, right? This uh, major level of uh, resistance that we're hitting right now is essentially just what we were, what was acting as support throughout the entire bull market, right? So you can see we came down, big bounce, big bounce, big bounce, big bounce, came back 
back off for that actual higher high, came back down, and then we held this as a range before getting that capitulation to the downside, right? Um, so we are in a very, and then this is basically what we are hitting our head against. Uh, and this is why we're stuck here, guys. It's because this is a, like a no-joke level of resistance. This is a serious level and uh, likely the reason why we are continually to sh uh, continuing to struggle here. But if we come uh, over to 2017 here and just zoom in uh, just a little bit, uh, I kind of like to compare this to this little 2019 fake out bull market that we had because it's very similar, right? You can see we came up and hit the all-time high in 2017. We came down, found a little bit of support here. Now, uh, uh, it's essentially the, uh, almost the same exact situation. If we take the uh, basically the lows of the bull market, right, after we topped out, even before we topped out when we flipped this level to support, uh, we created support, 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 support. Uh, and that is essentially uh, the lows of that bull market, right? So if we go ahead and we draw that uh, as a line, we could even bring it down to that wick, uh, that wick right here. And that is basically where you can see after we got our first uh, big move up out of that bear market, we came up and started hitting our head on that level, just as we are right now. Now, if we come back to here, you can see very, very similar situation. We have the floor of that uh, previous bull market, uh, the lows that we had here, and we are now continually testing that. So it's a very, very similar situation. And as you can see in 2019, it did wind up breaking out of this. We kind of came up, right? Started banging our head, kind of bullishly consolidated here, making somewhat of a bull pennant. Um, uh, just some bullish consolidation before smashing through that level. That You can't make this up. If you look at the money flow, you, you could see on the, uh, well, this is the four day. Let's actually see on the weekly I believe the four-day money flow is also, well, we're already in the green there, so we would technically be in a better situation um, right now. But you can see even the money flow is in almost the same exact situation here, very, very clo close to a crossover into the green. And then boom, you get that big move up. And where did this pump wind up bringing us? It wound up wound up bringing us to the macro golden pocket retracement from the all-time high. When you pull your FIB from that all-time high all the way to the bottom of the bear market, we came up to test that local golden pocket almost to the dollar. In mm -hmm which case, obviously, this is speculative, guys. It's just because this happened in the past does not mean it will 100% happen, uh, you know, the same way today. But, uh, you know... Uh Although history doesn't always repeat itself, it oftentimes rhymes. Uh, so if we wound up getting a move up to that similar level of that macro golden pocket from the all-time high to the all-time low, that would bring us to that 48 to 50K level you hear a lot of people talking about. So, uh, wow. you know, again, the local levels are kind of boring. Nothing really has happened. We've just gone sideways. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of zoom out and show you guys how similar of a situation we're in here. Um, and if you guys remember all the way back to uh, one of my older market updates, I think from the beginning of last week, we were looking at... Um, some of the higher time frames on coinalize.net. And uh, there were actually some warning signs that we could be setting up for somewhat of a pretty big short squeeze, which could easily blast us through this level. So kind of, uh, I'll leave you guys with this. Where I'm sitting um, on Bitcoin right now is with those higher daily time frames, it would be calling for a move back. We have bearish divergences forming. However, because of the state of the market we're in right now, we're in a very strong uptrend. We're testing an extremely key level of resistance. And we have that potential short squeeze coming. Um, and, and again, that's not 100%, but it could be uh, coming soon. And if we are going to get a push up into these higher levels uh, between about 30 and I would say about 32 or 33K is kind of the ma major range that I'm looking at. Um, if we get that move up, I do think it's going to be one of those times where you're like, oh my God, Bitcoin just ripped. What happened? And you're going to go to the chart. There's going to be some kind of uh, Lambo candle here. And it will be the result, in my opinion, uh, most likely of a short squeeze. So, um, and then I do think I will probably be adding to my swing short as we push up into this box and higher. Uh, but once we start cracking these levels at about 32.5, that's probably where I would consider that uh, short trade idea kind of invalidated. Uh, and then I would just take that small loss. And I am also in a long that is already in profit. And I recently, last week, just added to that position. So if we do get that big short squeeze up, I will be profiting in either direction, uh, which is the beauty of being a trader. So uh, that's about all I got for you guys. A little bit different today, just because the boring sideways action. I just kind of wanted to show you guys how we are testing that same floor of the bull market. The Crypto Fear and Greed Index aims to numerically present the current emotions and sentiments toward Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market, with the highest score being 100. The index also hit a score of 68 on March 21, marking its highest level since it recorded a score above 66 on November 16, 2021, just days after Bitcoin's all-time high of over $69,000 was recorded on November 10, 2021. 
If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.